acceleration of a solid sphere rolling, I suppose I should put without slipping, down an incline. Rolling without slipping down an incline. So we have the solid sphere, which starts up here, and it's rolling down the incline. And I want to know what is the acceleration of this object as it rolls down the incline. Now, one of the things that we do need is the moment of inertia about the center of mass of a solid sphere, which is not something that you are required to have memorized. So that would be something that is given to you, which is 2 fifths m r squared. You should, however, be able to identify, for example, which one has a larger moment of inertia. A hollow sphere or a solid sphere? Which one has a larger moment of inertia, assuming the same mass, same rate? Which one has a larger moment of inertia? The hollow one. Why? Because the mass, more of the mass is concentrated farther from the axis of rotation, right? So remember, it is based off of mr squared. The farther the mass is, from the axis of rotation, the larger the moment of inertia. Good. Where do we start? Conservation of energy. Conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is true when mechanical energy initially equals mechanical energy final. Tim? When is mechanical energy initially equal to mechanical energy final? No friction and no force applied. I'm confused. If this is rolling without slipping, is there friction? Yes. Energy is conserved. Why is it that energy is conserved and there is a force of friction? Why is energy conserved? Um, it's not sliding down the hill, it's rolling. Right. There's no sliding at all. Therefore, there's no energy loss to friction. Friction causes torque on it, causes it to rotate. But there, because there is no sliding, there's no energy loss to friction. So energy is conserved. We have mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Before we can begin working with conservation of mechanical energy, we need to identify, Nick? Zero. And? OK. What else do we need to identify? Even before we can do that. Mike will help him out. No way. <laughs> Sierra, help him out. You've got to oh, identify your initial and your final points, right? No, Before you can start talking about your mechanical energy, initial mechanical energy, finally, we have to specifically identify where those locations are. Mechanical energy, initial, what sort of energy does it start with, Zach? Gravitational potential energy, MGH initial, true. And that's it. It doesn't start with kinetic energy because it starts out with initial velocity of zero. What is a type of energy does it end with, please? Rensa. Kinetic energy, translational, and rotational. Rotational and translational kinetic energy because it is rolling without slipping, so it's both translational, moving, one half mv final squared, plus kinetic and rotational kinetic energy, one half i omega squared. All right. Let's see here. Um, from there, please. Mohit. Um, well, HI is just R plus H, because like. What's R? R would be the radius of the ah, sphere. So the radius is considered to be much, much smaller than any of the other things. So we're not concerned about the radius of the person. Okay, so one of the things that we need is one half, you can plug in the moment of inertia, two fifths times mr squared, 
times the angular velocity squared. Good. What else can we do? Sarah Jane Jones? Everyone brought mass. Now that we've done that, sure, we'll bring everyone. Oh, we just. Everyone brought mass to the party. Sure, we can get rid of the mass. We can be equitable. We could say, I'm not going to be out of the it. What else can we substitute in here? Um, how's it? Um, R squared or mega squared is the same as B times squared. Okay. Because the velocity final is going to be equal to r times omega, velocity final squared is going to be equal to the radius squared times the angular velocity squared. Therefore, we can substitute, as you said, for the final velocity here. We lose a 2 1 fifth uh, velocity final squared, 1 half velocity final squared, gh initial. So gh initial equals uh, 7 tenths velocity final squared. What are we trying to find? Sorry. Mm. I don't see acceleration right there yet. Say again? Uh, well, this is the velocity final squared, so it's going to be complicated if we're trying to deal with velocity final squared. Go ahead. Um, you could just solve for velocity final squared and then use UAM. UAM, notice this is going to be moving down on according to uniformly accelerated motion. We have one of the UAM, UAM equations that has the velocity final squared in it. The velocity final squared equals the velocity initial squared plus two acceleration times the displacement I'll put in the parallel direction. These are all in the parallel direction. Okay, so we have the velocity final squared here that is going to be equal to uh, 10 sevenths GH initial. So we have 10 over 7 gh initial, because uh, that's the velocity final squared, so I can substitute that in. Velocity initial is equal to 0, plus 2 times the acceleration in the parallel direction times the displacement in the parallel direction. Let's see, we can lose a 2. We can get the acceleration in the parallel direction equals g times height initial 5 over 7 times the displacement in the parallel direction. Miller. Um, sine of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Uh -huh. In there. Um, which is equal to h initial over delta d parallel. Therefore, the height initial equals the displacement of the parallel direction times the sine of theta. We can substitute in for height initial here. We get 5 over 7 times g times the displacement in the parallel direction times the sine of theta, that all divided by the displacement in the parallel direction. Those cancel out. We get that the acceleration in the parallel direction equals 5 sevenths g sine theta. Again, something to realize here is that does the planet, this is on, matter? Yes. Does the incline angle matter? Yep. Yes. Does the shape of the object matter? No. Yep. Yes. Right? Because that determined the moment of inertia. Does the mass of the object matter as far as the acceleration is concerned? No. No. Does the radius matter as far as the acceleration is concerned? No. The radius and the mass don't matter, but the shape does, because the shape determines the moment of inertia. So, if, the, if you have a larger moment of inertia, will it accelerate more quickly, the same, or less quickly down the incline if you have a larger moment of inertia. Who can answer that one for us? Travis? Less quickly. Less good quickly. Why? Because it resists the change. Uh, I agree with that. I'm going to do it in terms of energy. I think it's a little bit easier to see. If the moment of inertia is larger, there will be less energy left over for translational. Uh, kinetic energy, so it will be literally linearly accelerating less. You could do it in, in the terms of um, angular acceleration as well, but I think it's easier to see in terms of energy. 